guys welcome back to my channel oh my gosh it's been such a long time since I said that if you're new here please click the subscribe button I will be making a lot of content especially around home lifestyle and beauty and I wanted to update you with where I've been because I actually think I've been off YouTube for about a year <laughs> for about a year which is so unlike me um I will first talk about why I've been off of YouTube and then I will update you with what changes have happened since I've been off of YouTube. So I think mainly the reason I took time away from YouTube was because of my mental health. Um, I was finding that the content that I was putting out on YouTube was, um, I enjoyed that content, but after a while it became very draining because I felt like I had to keep on justifying my humanity, even with other black women, which was very triggering for me um, and also YouTube can be a very dangerous place as a dark-skinned black woman who tackles issues like race and um, and and sexism and when you're combining that together with colorism it it can mean that you're in a very vulnerable position because you can get trolls who are white you can get trolls who are um, kind of like black hotep guys from that sphere of the internet and then you can also find yourself justifying uh, you can also I also found myself justifying myself and my lived experience to n not all but a small number of other black women on here uh, whether they just didn't didn't believe in my views or they didn't really understand my lived experience um, it just got very, very draining for me. And at that time in my life, my life was already very draining. Um, I wasn't living on my own for a lot of the time that I was feeling like this. And I felt like I was juggling a lot of different things in my life that were negatively affecting my mental health. And it was just really, really distressing. And what was sad is that YouTube used to be a place where I felt very comfortable and at home. And it eventually started to become a place that I dreaded. I started comparing myself a lot to other YouTubers. I started seeing other YouTubers getting kind of like, um, just kind of notoriety or acclaim that I wasn't getting. And I felt very just forgotten. And it, 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 it's definitely not a real headspace to be in. Like now I kind of remind myself if I'm in a similar headspace, I'm like, it's not real. It's just kind of like in your head. Um, and I did really not focus on the amount of amazing support I've had on YouTube throughout the years. And I think I kind of forgotten, forgot about that, um, which is really sad because I really loved the community that I built on YouTube. Like the community I have here is one that I, I really do feel like is a safe space for so many other black women, especially other black British women. Um, but it was starting to become very draining and also I just wasn't getting paid like I was getting paid a lot more on other platforms like Instagram and my YouTube just wasn't bringing in the income to justify the mental health distress and the mental mental baggage um, and toll it was taking on me it was just like it's not worth it like why am I even here um, and then after a while, when you start to see that you're not getting out of, out of something, what you would like to get or what you think you deserve. I hope this is focused on my actual face. Yeah, when you feel like you're not get, getting out of something, like when you're putting in so much into something and you're not getting out any kind of like real tangible reward, it's very difficult to keep that momentum and to keep on going. And I was getting a lot more um, work on Instagram. I was working with a lot more brands. Brands were reaching out to me a lot more and my community on Instagram um, was starting to feel a lot like what my community on YouTube felt like in the beginning without the negative space in terms of like trolls and the abuse and consistently having to explain my lived experience and my humanity. Um, and so I just started spending more time on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I literally don't know what you're doing. I have bomb ass captions. My stories are super fun. There's question, uh, question and answers that I do like very, very often, like every week almost, where we talk about like sexism and mental health and colorism and all that kind of stuff. And it's been a really good outlet for me. And it reminds me a little bit about the good stuff I love from YouTube actually, like showing up very authentically in my stories and in my reels and stuff. I really, really enjoy 
um, Instagram and I've also been enjoying TikTok as well and I, I feel so much safer on those platforms but I, I had to kind of remind myself literally this month about why I started and I, it's so cliche but I had to kind of, I didn't want to, sorry I'm feeling a little bit itchiness on my neck, I really didn't want to neglect the audience that was here and I love that audience and I love the support that you guys give and I also love the, the energy and the space that is here and I didn't want to leave that behind and I also know God gave me this space for a reason and I didn't just want to kind of walk away from it just like that so I just decided to take some time and come back I don't know if I'll be doing videos like twice a week or three times a week like I used to at one point but I'll definitely be working towards releasing a video once a week so now that that's kind of out of the way I want to talk about the next thing which actually also plays a part in why I wasn't on YouTube a lot and that is because my health really really deteriorated so when I moved here that was January my health started to deteriorate from I would say about March so March onwards uh, my fibroids which I had been diagnosed with about a year before almost a year before maybe nine months before started to flare up more and more and more and present itself more and more and more and if you haven't seen my fibroids video I will link that below I think it's it's been about pardon me a year and a half since I last spoke to you guys about my fibroids but I was di diagnosed just before just just at the start of the pandemic roundabout so like May 2020 20, yeah 2020 um I was diagnosed I was told that I'm not I was told but I believe them and I think it was true that the, the fibroids were quite small um and they weren't really causing enough of a problem for me to have an operation and from the research I've done that is true sorry I had a tiny camera glitch um they did suggest that I go on the pill which at the time I didn't want to do and my reasonings for that were really really stupid I didn't want to go on it because I was scared that I would uh, lose control of my body and gain weight uncontrollably, which is something I had heard that the pill does. But I wish I did more research at the time. I think if I went, but also the doctor didn't explain why she would be putting me on the pill. She said, we'll, we're gonna put you like, would you like to go on the pill? That will help. She didn't explain how it would help. The way it would help is that the, fi the fibroids obviously are growing because of hormones in my body and the hormones in the combined pill would have helped to decrease the fibroids and would also decrease the symptoms um, that would manifest because of fibroid flare-ups, especially the hormone called progesterone. Um, of, uh, and obviously it's just very, very difficult when you have a system like the NHS which is very underfunded and sometimes they just don't even have the time to really pay attention to their patients and it's very very frustrating and as a black woman navigating the NHS it's been hell like actual hell um, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy from March I started kind of like spotting between periods and then my periods started getting longer and longer like at first it would be 10 days and then it went on to be 16 days and it, then it was like three weeks and then it just wouldn't stop I had a non-stop period pretty much from I think March April till uh, August like it was insanely bad and what was happening in terms of um, medication was that I was trying to get uh, registered to my new GP and I would then be told that I had to wait six weeks for an appointment and then when I was fully registered I would then be passed off from department to department when I called 111 they didn't actually know really who to pass me on to because I think that the people who are on the phones so if you're American 111 is kind of like calling 911 for the ambulance but it's kind of like a different department that deals with non-emergency care so things that aren't like life-threatening but they are still a health issue that needs attention so I would call them and then they would pass me on to sexual health and they would pass me on to maternity and they'll just pass me on to all of these different departments when really I'm supposed to be passed on to gynecology but the way that the system in the NHS works is so frustrating because you always have to be referred to gynecology through your GP and referrals themselves can take months so by the time I was referred to a GP it was June and that referral on average can take about two months maybe two months and a half and so during that time I was given a certain type of combined pill 
um, which did not start working straight away. And the thing about gynecological gynecological health is that it's so underfunded that there are no kind of sure cures there are no like this is definitely going to work for you of course everybody is different like literally everybody is different and so everyone reacts to medication differently but there is something about gynecology that is so much of a roulette game and it's very much of we we, we really just don't know and I feel like so many other types of organs and so many other types of body uh, body parts have had the funding which means that doctors have more information of what is going to happen to that body part or to that organ or the effects of the medication they can give a much more rounded and articulate picture of what's going on but when it comes to to ovaries there is a sexism within the scientific industry that means that they really one don't really care and two they I underestimate the pain that is caused when there's something wrong with ovaries and also they dismiss you so easily which causes accidents can cause deaths can cause uh, reproductive issues as well and it's it it really was so frustrating because bleeding for four months I can't even tell you like words cannot articulate how painful and bad it was at times it would be so heavy like my like my bleeding was just like I would bleed through my clothes I would bleed through my sheets and it wasn't just blood it was like blood clots which I'd never fully had before I'd had like small blood clots but these were like blood, blood clots like almost the size of my palm it was excruciatingly painful like it actually put me off childbirth a lot because the pain that I felt like I could feel something pushing out of my ovaries and it was just an excruciating it, it very invasive type of pain as well incredibly invasive um, and I am really grateful that I had a really good support group who were just so attentive during that time it started to basically become like having a chronic illness and um, when you're chronically ill it's just very difficult to feel seen and heard because the people around you do they want to help but they aren't going through what you're going through their body isn't feeling what you're feeling and I remember even just a couple of weeks ago being out with one of my friends and I was just like oh I need to go and change my pad and she was just like you just put one in and I was just like yeah I know and she was just like but it's a pad and I was just like so <laughs> like when you have a fibroid flare up flare up whether it's a pad or a cup if you're bleeding heavily you're going to bleed heavily but i'll come on to like how i'm feeling now in a moment after those four months the bleeding stopped because i think the um contraception um pill that they gave me finally worked and the hormones they do they do say it takes about two or three months to finally kick in which is another annoying side effect of just ovaries and also maybe scientific underfunding it's just like why does it take so long for there to be a difference there's literally no other way for them to stop my bleeding by that time however like my i had lost so much blood over that time frame that my blood count was really really low and i literally had to be rushed into my gp's office and from there he rushed me to a and e and at a and e i was told that i had to be given to blood transfusions i have never had transfusions in my life people with sickle cell i can't even imagine like that really i obviously had compassion for people who had sickle cell but Th that experience really showed me what they go through because that w their their experience is, is 10 times more painful than what I experienced because they're also getting blood taken out of their bodies and blood being put in. Um, so having a blood transfusion took about three days because, you know, the NHS is underfunded. So one day they came, I went to A&E and they said, yep, stay. And they would put the cannula, which is this big, fat, uncomfortable, painful ass needle in my arm. And my dad was with me. He was so sweet. He brought me stacks, which helped. And then I had to get the cannula taken out because they're like, no, we don't have your blood here. You need to come back tomorrow. Meanwhile, I'm supposed to be working through all of this. So I came back the next day and then they put it in and then they were like, oh, we don't have your blood still. It hasn't come back from uh, hematology. I think that's where it is. And so I had to get the cannula taken out and then come back in the third day. On the third day, my brother came with me. Uh, I think he was with me, with me on the second day as well. And that day they finally had my blood. So they had the blood and they also had the iron. So even though I'd been taking my iron supplements, the iron in my body was still enough. And one thing that's really frustrating as well in this whole thing is this thing of unsolicited advice. And I think I have mentioned this on YouTube before, but I'm a lot more explicit about, about it on Instagram. 
please don't give me unsolicited advice, especially if you're not a medical doctor who has uh, access to my files. Just don't. Because a lot of people were telling me things that actually could have killed me. Like, take, oh, take, make sure you take ibuprofen. Ibuprofen actually has chemicals in it that would increase my bleeding. So why would I want to take that? Like, it just, like, a lot of things just didn't make sense. Or, oh, make sure you're taking your iron tablets. Of course I'm taking my iron tablets. I can take all the iron tablets I want. If the blood is continuously coming out of me, the iron isn't going to stay in my body. It's just, you know, it's, it's, it's really, really frustrating um, to have people do that. And I know people get annoyed at influencers for saying that, but you don't understand what it's like for like 200 people or even 10 people to be giving you unsolicited advice when you are chronically ill. Or even if you're not chronically ill, like having strangers give, giving you advice on the internet is really, really, um, it's really, really offensive. And it's really, really irritating when you're going through something. And I think the main thing people need is literally just compassion if they're going through something like this. Anyway, so on that third day, I was able to get the iron transfusion and also the blood transfusion. It was very painful because as you can imagine, my arms were getting needles taken in, taken out. And I, during this time, I was also having blood tests taken from both arms constantly because once you're you've had like once you're about to get the transfusion you need to have a blood test then afterwards they need to check that you're okay and then the next day I was getting blood tests I was getting blood tests like basically like four times a week it was insane I think in general I've like I do have like kind of like scarring like soft scarring on my arms because like of how many needles have been going in those veins it's not even like I'm doing drugs people but here we are um, after the transfusion, if I'm honest, I didn't feel any different. Maybe I was just depressed and tired and, and maybe my mental state kind of overtook my physical state. I don't know, but I think scientifically I felt better. Um, after that, the blood bleeding stopped. It started again and then I was switched on to a different type of medication. And as I am now, I'm bleeding, but that's basically because I... I've been switched to a different med uh, type of medication, which means I need to stop taking that medication for a couple of, like for almost a week. And during that week, I basically will have my period and then I go back onto the medication. So the bleeding is subsiding and I'm now back onto the medication for the next kind of like cycle. And then I will break again after about three weeks and a half. Um, but that's kind of where I am in terms of my health. Woo! It's been a lot. Um, one thing that has added a lot of joy to my life is obviously getting a puppy. So in September, I decided to get a puppy. It was very haphazard. I mean, to be fair, I've, I've, I've always wanted to get a dog. Like for, for about two years, I, when I envisioned my life and I kind of visualized my life, I visualized having an amazing apartment and having a dog and having a cute car. I don't know if I want a cute car in London though, I've spoken about this, but those are the three things. I envisioned and having a cute boyfriend with those other things like not just that and so when it got to like the end of August I was like you know what I'm getting a dog I'm gonna I'm gonna do it and then I'm just gonna jump in and go for it so uh, me and my brother dr drove up to the West Midlands after I I've made a whole video about the process which will be coming up soon so we went to the Mid West Midlands somewhere I don't know where but um, I got my dog from Pets for Homes and um, his name is Aslan after Aslan um, from The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, which is kind of like my special like swan song to myself because it's like, it just reminds me that like God is always in my apartment, even if it's a dog. It's like, it reminds me, it reminds me of the presence of God somehow. Um, and it's also like not overly Christian. Like I'm not gonna call him like Emmanuel. It's a bit much, but like calling him Aslan is like, oh, and he looks, a little, he's got kind of like a mane and kind of looks like a lion and he has this like curly hair and I wanted to have a brown dog because I'm brown. So that's added, like having Aslan has added so much joy to my life. Oh my gosh, it's made me more responsible. I think also it's made me realize how much more capable of being a mother I think I am more than I think I am because like for the first couple of months I literally wasn't sleeping but I was still kind of just like surviving thriving just powering on um, and now it's a lot easier to be a dog mom and yeah he's like my best friend we do a lot of things together we just chill in the lounge together we go on walks uh, we meet up with other dog parents especially it's great to meet up with other black dog parents as well um, and also like it just makes your life more sociable because instead of like maybe like 
during these COVID times, working from home and having the same routine, like when you have a puppy or when you have a dog, like you never have the same routine. Um, and yeah, he's just amazing. He has an Instagram. If you would like to follow his Instagram, I'll put it somewhere. And yeah, so that's pretty much a roundup of my life update. Work is amazing. Like I'm working with amazing, amazing brands, like big brands that I was kind of like hoping and dreaming and praying that I could work with. And now it's like finally happening. So everything's kind of coming together. Well, most things, nothing's ever perfect. Obviously this is life. Um, and my mental health sometimes like right now it's not the best but in general like I'm so grateful for my life and I wake up and I look out into my big windows and I'm like I'm so grateful for my life and the sunlight that comes into this, this apartment and putting up things in my home to make it feel like it's my apartment and personalizing everything has like brought me so much joy so I will be taking you on like my home tour journey and just like everything to do with my flat because so much has changed since last year since early last year um but yes thank you so much for watching and make sure you do subscribe if you haven't subscribed already hit that subscribe button and I will be back with another video very soon bye